All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. So welcome to part two. We are currently one over through the front nine, which is lights out way better than I've ever played this course. I, I'm, I'm fairly certain. So we're on hole 10 now. We're gonna jump right on in. Let's get it. Wrong hole 10. So it goes up on top of that rock pile. It's like in the middle of the fairway. It goes up and then kind of curves a little bit towards the right. So essentially you want to either throw like a four, like a chip forehand to get up there and lay up and then kind of pitch up for par, or you can try to get all the way down there. Um, I am going to try throwing the BB6, which is an understable mid-range. I'm going to try throwing the flat. Oh, sit down. Okay, so that went very long. You're going to hit the tree line behind the basket, but that was a great shot. Um, so we might have a chance to pitch out for a, a par. So welcome back guys. Um, I'm still out here dying of heat because Pennsylvania right now is deciding that September is a great month to have the hottest days of the, of the year so far. Um, this week alone, I think it's supposed to get up to like 98, which is stupid and it's always just humid. So it's even more stupid. Um, but yeah, so welcome back in. We're rip and ready to go to do this back nine here and uh, see if we can't get one back and finish this round even. That would be really cool. I haven't really decided, nor have I spoken about what I would do if I beat the course in the first video. I mean, obviously I would just pick a new course, but like, I assume this would be like a long, oh, I hit these trees. Oh, solid. Anyway, um, yeah. So I assume this would be like a long series and each course would take some time. But like, if this one only takes one, maybe I just go buy ice cream and I live my life happy. I don't know. But I actually hit the leaves on this tree and it just dropped straight down. Or it was like that tree and just dropped it straight down. So I actually have a way better putt for birdie now, which is insanely cool. Okay, hold on a second. Oh, that was such a good putt. That was a great putt, and that's, that's, I'm more, I'm more, okay, I'm gonna step into the camera so I can actually talk to you. I'm holding on to that for one reason. That was a well-released putt, and it was online. Was it high? Sure. Did it go in? No. But that's okay. Because my goal is to get better at putting, so that future videos of these go a lot smoother. So, that being high but well-released is, is way better than I could have asked for. So, there you go. So what, what the main point of, the main takeaway of that is, these were well-released putts, and I'm keeping it in perspective. Am I gonna make every birdie putt? No. Was that very close to being made from like 15, 20 feet out? Yes, and that's fantastic. It was a well-released putt, it was online. Did I almost miss that? Absolutely. Did it still go in? Sure. So what does it score for it say? It's a par, not big. All right, you're still one over through 10 now. So this hole is a hole 11. It wraps around and bends to the right a little bit, then kind of hits a plateau, and then goes back to the left and straightens out towards the basket. Um, I can throw a really good flex shot and kind of get down there. So I'm going to try throwing a flex shot with my midi um, and see if I can't get this to kind of hold a turn for a little bit, then pan out because it's a little bit more stable. But we're going to see what happens. I think I'm just going to throw a forehand and be safe because there's a real possibility I actually have a chance of doing this. And that being said, I'd rather actually give myself a chance of doing this if I'm this close. Like, if I wasn't close, I would just go for it and be like, let's just try something cool and see what happens. But since I'm actually doing well and actually have a chance of doing it, I think I'm just going to throw a little forehand on hyzer and let it just kind of go around the corner and I'm just going to try to lay up for a par. Yep. Wow. Okay. Well... We hit a late tree in the flight. I pushed a little too far straight, so note to self, stable up a little bit. Um, but like, we're in the fairway at least, so I have a chance to kind of pitch around and then try to get down there for a part. So I want to talk about that because that was a very big moment for me because normally my play style is very aggressive. Even if I'm doing really bad, I just start going for all the glory shots because I'm like, it's going to be cool if I make this and it would be really cool to get one back on the course in a really fun way. But... This challenge is to shoot my best score possible. And sometimes that means you have to make the decision to do something smart and do something boring rather than try to be the, be the hero and do a hero shot. So I decided to do something that I've done before and that's safe. 
and that takes trouble out of play. And now, did it turn out perfectly? No. But I have a way better shot from here than I would if I didn't turn it over and went into the woods that way, like 50-some feet. Or I did turn it over, but burnt it and it didn't get off the tea, the tea pad. Or I burned it and it goes into those woods somewhere because it kicks a tree bad. So, at least I have a shot here. Um, so I think that's a smart thing to think about. What you're, whatever shot you're more comfortable doing, do that if you're trying to score. It, when you're doing a scoring round, it's not the time to try to experiment with things. You just need to do the shots you feel comfortable with and then move on. Guys, I am so stupid. I was a dumb dumb and I did not turn my microphone on until now, but it's okay because I'm going to make sure that we, I don't think I'm going to be able to get audio at all from this, but I'll at least explain to you if I can remember what I said, I'll explain to you what I was saying. So I'm sorry for that guys. That was, that was on my bad. I, once I saw all the people here, I got really thrown off my game and was like, oh, there's so many people here, dude. I bet you, like, I got to get going. I'm, I'm in trouble. There's a thing going on. Which there is a thing going on. But anyway, um, so we're going to we're gonna pick up from here. I'm going to throw what's more comfortable with me, and I'm going to try to throw a little forehand flex shot out around here for a pitch up. I'm going to take my more stable Artemis, and I'm going to basically just throw, like, a touch of, a touch of, of Anheuser forehand, like a little step out one and just give it some height and hope it just like pans out and then goes down that way a little bit. So let's see what we can do. <sighs> Pan out. That was too much Anheuser. Too much Anheuser, but it's okay because it's down there. It's not in position for a par putt, sadly, I don't think. But like, it's a note for next time. All right, guys, so we're not in position for a par putt. I didn't really think I would be, especially from where I am at now. This is gonna this is just basically gonna be me doing a little tiny like pitch out here. I'm going to try to walk behind my disc here so I don't actually, like, foot fault and I can actually get a view of the basket. So it's going to be a little pitch out. I was really close to that tree, which I wasn't trying for, but, like, it worked, I guess, enough. So we're out there. It's a bogey. All righty. So bogey town, USA. But it's okay because... We learned some valuable lessons. I played smart, and there's no guarantee that the, my a backhand Anheuser might not have turned out as good as that did anyway. So, like, we could have just basically just finished with the same score we would have finished with had I tried a backhand. So, you know, you never know, but, like, I'm doing really well right now, so I don't want to chance it, because if there's a chance I can get two birdies on the back, which I think there are a couple of chances, like, I could be back to even. We could be done with this, this course. We're now two over. Not too bad. Uh, we're on hole 12. It goes through here. So there's a really stupid mando off this, this tree here, which if you're hitting that, that's a problem. But like you could, I guess, but like it'd be a problem. Um, which is easily, easily combated by. I just throw a forehand from over here down the way and it goes and you're fine. So it goes down that way and it cuts a little bit like really quickly to the right and the basket's like right there. There you go. Now I can actually see. So I'm going to cut this. I'm just going straight down this gap and we're going to see if I can't get a nice little forehand down there without hitting that tree right in the middle there. That's going to be great, actually. Ooh, that went long. Okay, well, that's fine. It went a little bit long and hit the, the back line of trees over top of that log, but I should still have an, o an open look at the basket, so all there's going to be there is going to be a big boulder right behind the basket that I'm just going to have to put over top of, but it's open. All right, so we are fighting the light a little bit, and there are rangers that will eventually come around and say, hey, you guys need to leave. So, so I want to try to get this round finished. I don't know if I will, but I'm definitely going to try to get this round done. I'm in a really weird spot, so I'm not really going to try to give this too hard of a run, but I am going to try to get it in. Get in. Oh, boy. Yeah, buddy. That's bird, baby. Woo! All right, guys. Good little birdie there. Good good birdie pickup. So now we are one over through 12. So we're back on track. I just basically got to get one birdie in this back stretch here. Um, and, like, we're, we're solid. All these holes are par threes, by the way. I, don't, I never mentioned it in the first video. Um, so I'll just mention it quickly now so you guys know. I really haven't been saying pars either, and you're probably like, well, how, well, how do you know? How do you know what you got? It's probably everything's pars. All right, everybody, we're on hole 13. We are one over currently. Double mando, you have to go in between them. Uh, this hole sucks. I'm not going to lie to you. This hole is not good towards me anyway. Like, I've, I've had very little success on this one, so I'm just going to try to throw something nice and easy, flat through the gap, let it skip up there, and just take a par. I think that's the safe way to get out of here with hopefully not too much damage. <sighs> Get around it. 
that actually might be a look for a birdie because I got a gigantic skip and that was like the closest inside you can cut that line without being, not missing the mando. Like that missed the tree that it was like that little wide tree. It like just barely scraped by that. We have a very little picturesque birdie look here. It's framed up nicely. This would be a bonus bird, by the way. Like I never expect to get this hole ever. Let alone do I ever expect to actually make the mando. So I would love this if I could make, if I could say I made this. <sighs> get in. Yo, <laughs> missed it, but I don't care. First one counts, baby. First one counts, baby. All right, even par through 13. Holy moly, back-to-back -back birdies, baby. The dream is real. I'm actually playing really well today, and I'm super hyped, man. Holy moly. So we are even par through 14. Hole 14. Straight this way bends a little bit to the right, not as far as it looks. I'm going to throw the BB6 again, because this thing has a ton of glide on it. And I think if I can get, get over on it again, I can get it to keep traveling right for me and then maybe fade out at the basket. Like that would be the dream. <sighs> Turn right. Okay, that kicked into the trees on the right-hand side, but that's okay because it actually, the basket is that way. So it saved me by a little bit. We are out of position for the birdie. That's okay. I'm not too worried about getting another birdie at the moment. You can only focus on what's ahead of you. And there's a couple holes ahead of me that I think I have a good shot at. I am going to try and pitch out this little window here and get myself a, a, a par opportunity. Oh, that's so bad, dude. That's so bad. That's okay. All right, unforced error. That was just bad. That's okay though. We'll pitch out for a bogue. And that will be back to one on one over, but that's okay. Cause we have, like I said, we have, we have birdie opportunities ahead of us. So just it, nailed it. Perfect. I actually had given some of that height that might've gone in, but that's okay. I wasn't worried about it. I just want to get a bogey and leave. Okay guys, speed bogue tap in. We're off the next one. A little disappointment with the one over there, but that's okay. I tried a shot that I'm not comfortable with, which was a little jump putt through all that stuff. I should have just putted normally and gave it some height and that might've worked better. 15, straight ahead, bears left down a hill. Basket's about halfway down that hill. So you want to try to throw something that you think you can get to stop. Um, I'm going to throw a putter. And I'm just going to try to throw it straight. Um, like just let it go flat and straight and let it kind of work its own way back towards the basket. That's going to be fantastic. Just sit. I think that went all the way down the hill, but that was like, that was, that shot was laced. Like that had so much heat on it. That's okay. All right, guys, I am in the woods back here. I went a lot straighter than I thought I did and it did not quite finish as hard as I thought it was going to. So this is a little, this is a little wonky here, but I mean, I'm, I'm going to make this work. We're going to pitch out and try to get a par. I have like no... I have like no line to get out of here really. Actually, I have a little bit of a high like forehand gap. I don't normally forehand my putting putters, but we're gonna have to we're gonna have to give it a shot because there's no other way to get out here. Get out. I just thought I dunked that. Oh, I'm so mad. <laughs> that was such a better run than I thought it was. I thought I just dunked that. I'm gonna have to watch a replay of that because that looked so so good. Okay. Whew. Good par, good par. All right, guys, hole 16. It's pretty straight. There is a mando right once you get to the tree there, like that's dead straight in the center, like up the fairway a bit. To the right of that's a mando and you can actually see the basket maybe kind of depending on the light. So I'm gonna try to throw something up there and get like a touch of turn out of it. I'm gonna throw the curl. I'm gonna try to throw it flat and have a touch of turn so it kind of turns past off that, that mando and then just fades out straight at the basket and see if we can't get up there for you know, like a par, like a par. Get lucky. It did not get lucky, but it fought through. We're in the woods. So we might take another bogey on this one. If we do, we're just gonna have to, we're gonna have to birdie out. It did not get that far up. That's okay. We do have the ability to try to do like a really interesting, like scoop forehand to try to get around the corner and have like at least a look. I'm walking through spider webs. This is gross. I don't like this. Um, I'm gonna throw the chupacabra. It is so overstable. Now this might be a stupid idea, but like, I just need to get this around the corner. Skip. All right, we hit the tree. 
That's all right. It's probably not gonna be a par. All right, guys. So probably no par. We're probably gonna fall back to two over again. Um, and that's okay. Because we can always, we can always try to birdie out. 17, 18 aren't that bad. So we're just gonna try to do a little jump putt here. <sighs> Sit. Oh my God. I thought I just made that. I thought, I mean, at first I thought it was long. That's why I said sit, because I thought it was going to go over the basket. And then as it started to drop, I was like, okay. <laughs> oh, well. So the breaking the, or being the course series lives on at Boulder for a second round. I think that's how it's going to end up panning out. I will say this. I'm insanely proud of how well we did. Because up until this point, my best round here, I think, was like a 10 over on this track. Like this course just eats my lunch every single time I play here. But for, for the first time, I'm actually playing, like, really safe and really well. And I have to say, man, it works. If you're struggling at scoring at really hard courses, play for par. This is not how I normally play. Play for par. It's so much easier. All right, guys. Hole 17. We are three over. Straight away. Bends a little to the, to the left and then kind of finishes straight back out again. Um, I'm just going to throw my, my armadillo here. Just a, a simple little one speed just off the tee flat and try to get it out there and get myself a putt. It's a little high. Hit the tree and sit down. So that is that is probably long in the basket left. We're probably going to be shooting for par again. Not what not what I wanted to do, but like, it's okay. It's okay. We still have eighteen. I can still get to two over, which would be fantastic. All right, guys. Tough break. That was that shot was way too high, and now we're across the road, actually from the basket. Like, there's a walkway here. Um, there's there's an, the ability for me to pitch up and get over top for a par, so I'm going to try that. But it's it's going to be a it's going to be a little bit of a struggle. That was actually a really good layup slash almost like a half run. Um, it's like a foot away from the basket, and it just kind of elevator dropped right in front of the basket. So not too bad on that front. Um, good layup. We'll be a par. I'll just catch you guys at 18. All right, guys, we're on 18. Rangers telling everyone to leave. I'm going to finish this last hole, and then we're out of here. So 18, straight ahead, baskets off to the left. Just going to throw my Adillo down there and hope I get a chance for a birdie, because that'd be cool. If not, we're going to get a par at least, and we'll be, we'll be out of here. Uh-oh. Get back. We're in the middle of some crap, but we'll have a chance to up and par. All right, guys, we're in here a little deep. Been a, deeper than I thought anyway, I should say. I'm not really sure how I'm going to do this. I mean, there's a little really small little gap there. I guess I could try to go, to shove my disc through, but that's not smart. I'm just trying to look for better options. I mean, I guess I could try to go up over top again. I'm just going to straddle a little bit like here. I'm just try to go up over top. Good. Okay. That should be good for our, our par. And we're done. We're out of here. <gasps> They're coming. They're going to yell at me. All righty, guys. New record three over for me that's a new record for me oh my god oh my god what a round and with all the technical issues i can't get rid of this video dude because i'm not sure when i'm going to shoot this well again next i really don't i think my game's in a good spot where i could do it again but i have no clue so i'll do an outro in the car all right guys well we're back in the car now we're leaving the uh the park rangers i think are are doing their rounds and there, there are some other people here so like i got away with it pretty okay all that to be to be said Ended up shooting a three over. We didn't beat the course yet, but we got way, way closer than I thought we would like from on the first go round. I thought I was going to shoot like an outrageous number that was just going to be like way worse than my personal best. And then we were going to have to work up to my personal best again and then eventually beat it. But like, I mean, I, we started off way hotter than I thought we ever would. Um, there are a couple holes that I wish I could really get back where I, I, I don't know, I have brain farted and tried to do things that I, I've never tried before. And just, you know, I could have played so many smarter shots. I mean, the other part of this is also learning on what holes I should start to push and what holes I can play for par easy enough. And like, I'm consistent at getting par. So that's another variable that I need to start looking into is like everything, every time I play, what holes can I easily get par on? And then how do I push for birdie on the next time? Like 11, for instance, I know I could throw a flex shot down and get down there, but how consistent I can do that, I don't know. So I don't, I, I wanna, I hesitate calling it a baseline round to see like what I can do. 
Um, but like, this is a great example of like what I could do just playing for par. All things to think about for next time. I'll definitely have to get out here a little earlier. That way I can actually finish in the sunlight and not feel rushed. But for the most part, I played really well and I am not upset. Thank you guys so much for joining. Please leave comments um, of other courses in the Pennsylvania area that you know that I should try. Like if it's not too far of a drive away and I don't have, like don't have to take off work for it and all that great stuff, I'll do it. If I have to take off work for it and that, that course might come later in the line when I'm running out of local courses and that would be like a once a month instead because I'll have to make a trek to go do that. But like I can do that. I, I'm, I'm so speechless just because I, I it was such a blur those last couple of holes because I was just rushing through everything and trying to get stuff done. I, I just can't believe I shot as well as I did. I kind of wish I didn't rush now. Thank you so much, everybody, for tuning in. Uh, I love y'all. Please like, comment, subscribe. Click the notification bell so you don't miss anything from me. And I will see you guys in the next one. Love y'all.